All right, joined now by Cecil Cooper. And Cecil, it is great to see you. Of course, 11 years with the Milwaukee Brewers up until 1987, a five-time All-Star, a two-time Gold Glove Award winner. And we're celebrating some Brewers classics as we wait for baseball to come back. And you've been a part of so many great Brewers games. Of course, the 1982 ALCS, that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. So let's just go back. The Angels, the California Angels, had won games one and two at home in Anaheim. So as you guys are getting ready to go back to Milwaukee, you're facing elimination. What was the mentality, the level of confidence within the team, within the clubhouse, that you guys could turn this thing around and come away with a series win? Well, you know, we were always a pretty confident group, uh, you know, all the way through the season. Uh, you know, because we had some some real, what I call big name stars and some real solid players. And we've always, we're pretty confident, you know, and uh, a good group and, and, a, and, a, and a great uh, kind of atmosphere in the clubhouse all the time. And uh, we went into that series, uh, we were kind of still, you know, excited about winning the, uh, the pennant, you know, coming from Baltimore and winning the pennant. So we were still a little uh, in the celebratory uh, mood. And all of a sudden, we have to go out there and then play, you know, the first couple of games in, uh, in L.A., uh, in Anaheim, rather. And uh, they kind of jumped on us early and they got us down and uh, we, we tried to rally. Uh, the first game was real kind of difficult. Uh, uh, we didn't get our footing till kind of late in the game. And, and then uh, game two was, you know, relatively close. I think it was four to two, if I remember correctly. And then, uh, you know, just coming back home, we just knew that we'd have our fans out and they'd be excited and we'd be excited. And it was a great uh, plane ride home. We knew that we could, uh, you know, come back and very confident. And uh, we had so, some big horses uh, on the hill to go for us. So we, we, we felt real good about it. Your manager, Harvey Keen, after you dropped the first two games of that ALCS, he said, look, our backs aren't against the wall. They're behind the wall. And at that point, <laughs> no, no American League team had ever come back from a 2 nothing deficit. So you spoke a little bit about the confidence. Cecil, what was it about coming back home, knowing that you were facing elimination from the jump, and you come back to County Stadium and the fans that are waiting for you there in an elimination game? Well, you know, the, the fans of Milwaukee always was, uh, you know, throughout even my 11-year career, there were just exciting people and, and good people and very uh, supportive all the way through for our teams. And uh, you know, I can remember some days at County Stadium when uh, we'd have all the signs up and all that. So they were always supportive. And we just knew that once we saw our people and kind of got ourselves on feet on the ground a little bit, that we'd be very confident to, to win the games and, and play well. And we're fortunate enough we came out in uh, game three and uh, got off to a good running start. And, you know, we held on for a game three win. So kind of set the stage for the rest of the weekend. Well, let's talk about game three a little bit. So you had some horses going on the mound for you. You send Don Sutton to the mound. He gives you seven and two thirds innings, doesn't give up any runs until the eighth. And, Coop, it was your RBI double in the fourth that gave the team a lead. How much did a moment like that matter in an, in an elimination game and to deliver a, a big hit like that in that moment? Well, you know, it's always a confidence builder, you know, for the team when you can uh, come up with a big hit, uh, mm -hmm. especially when we knew we had a, a real horse on the mound, a guy who's been through all that before. And uh, he pitched a, an awesome game for us to kind of keep us there and keep us in the lead. And, and to get a big hit like that, that kind of gives you a little boost. And I, th I thought it boosts us, all of us a little bit, and everybody was excited. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to come out with that big win there to, to propel us on into those last couple of ball games. So it was your double earlier in the game that gives you the lead. Paul Molitor adds on with a two-run homer. And in the first couple of games, the bats were a little quiet. And this is a team that's known as Harvey's wall bangers, right? Was it nice to see the bats come alive a little bit in, in game three and to keep you guys alive like Paul, like you did and Paul Molitor did in that game? Well, it's always good, yeah. When You, you, know, we, you knew we were going to break out at some point. Uh, we went into Baltimore at that last series, and we were a little quiet early, and then we kind of started swinging the bats well those last couple of games to, to, to win that championship on that end. And we were a little quiet going into uh, Anaheim in the first couple of games there, and uh, we just knew that we could break out. And we'd done it all year long, and we just knew that the bats would start clicking, and uh, <laughs> they started clicking, and 
once you get things like that going, then it's always, you know, really good. And it gives everybody else confidence and guys start to relax a little bit. So it was definitely a, a plus for us to, but I think one of the real, real keys was just having, uh, you know, our big guy go out and shut him down early and give us mm -hmm. a chance to, to kind of relax and get that lead going. Definitely. So you win game three, five to three. That sets you up for game four. Again, still an elimination game. You're sending Moose Haas to the mound um, against the Angels. And, and this was a little different looking of a game. Both teams combined for five errors. Uh, what do you remember about game four and maybe some of those plays that stood out from that game? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think maybe I even made one in that ball game. I'm not for sure, but I know I, I had one or two in the series. And, uh, you know, sometimes that happens when you almost, mm -hmm. uh, this is the like elimination, you know, especially on our part. And uh, sometimes teams come out that way, uh, two of the best teams in the league, and to come out and sometimes you play a little tight, you know, especially uh, 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 from their standpoint. You know, they're, they're on the road. They're trying to, to wrap this thing up. And always when you have that clinching game, it's very difficult to, to shut a team down and, and completely uh, uh, close out the series. It's always uh, tough to do that. And sometimes the nerves get you a little bit. And, and I know uh, uh, in my case, uh, I probably did. You know, it happens sometimes. But, but we were able to rebound and, and win that game and, and propel us into uh, to game five. Well, in game four, it was Mark Bruhard who replaced Ben Ogilvy in left field. What do you remember about how he contributed in that game, Cecil? He went three for four and had three RBIs in that game, including a home run late in the game. Well, you know, Mark uh, had some big hits for us all year. And uh, he was a guy who would platoon a little bit with Ben Ogilvy. Sometimes he'd play uh, right field if we need him to or pinch hit. And a big part of our team. And uh, uh, that particular year, everybody chipped in, with, you know, with big hits. And, and Mark was one of the guys who really stepped up for us in that game. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, anytime you can get a guy coming off the bench and can, can contribute, it just helps everybody. You'll be more confident. And uh, he did have a couple of big hits in that game. And uh, I tell you what, a lot of times when, uh, when you get a guy like that, uh, especially not a regular guy who steps up and gets a big hit, it kind of boosts the other guys to, to, to come through. Cecil, what does that say about the depth of that 1982 team? Well, that's, that's one of the things that I was uh, intentioning to, to mention is everybody played a big part, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the year. We had guys step in, uh, Eddie Romero, different, different guys that were on the bench. They would step up and they would play and play well. Uh, we even had, uh, I think, Peter Ladd stepped up during the season when Raleigh Fingers went down with an injury and became our closer. You know, we had Bob McClure who stepped up and did a, a very good job for it. Dwight Bernard, a lot of these guys stepped in for us and, and did good jobs for us down at the end. And then not to, to, to forget uh, uh, Don Sutton. You know, he came over late in the year. And, man, he was a big boost for us as well. So anytime you, you have a championship or a winning team, it takes a lot of parts. I mean, you, your main guys are going to contribute, but you still have to have that uh, uh, chip in and, and, and support from the other players. As you guys are starting to even the series here, you win game three, you win game four. Can you describe what the atmosphere was like at County Stadium and the support you received from the great Brewers fans throughout that series to set you up for a game five? Well, you know what? That game five, uh, <laughs> starting off the game, it was rocking right from the start. I mean, it was loud and people were into it and you could tell and it, everybody was all fired up and uh, mm -hmm. I know the players were fired up and, uh, you know, game uh, five, uh, ALCS really for the chance to go to the World Series. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better situation and to be in our home park with our mm -hmm. fans cheering us on. Just an outstanding atmosphere. And I am just so thrilled that uh, we had a chance to, to come back and win. So game five, winner takes the AL pennant. Of course, you sent Pete Vukovic to the mound who would be the Cy Young Award winner that year in the American League. At that point, you've even the series, right? You've got your home fans behind you. Cecil, at that point, was there any doubt you guys were winning game five? No, I don't think so. I, I think, uh, you know, it was advantage Milwaukee for sure uh, mm -hmm. with our big boy on the mound, uh, Vuk. And, uh, you know, we still have our big bats, you know. And we had kind of quieted their bats a little bit. And so uh, we felt like we were in good shape. Uh, you know, early on, it kind of was a little bit of a struggle for us to kind of really come through. 
But once we, you know, got a couple of opportunities and we were able to come through, then you could just feel that the confidence was rolling and, and uh, the stadium was rocking. And, and man, when, he, when that ground ball went to Ryder Young <laughs> and he scooped it up and threw across the diamond, I mean, that's the greatest feeling in the world. So we knew we were going to come back. We just had that confidence. And especially when we got the, the base hit uh, in the seventh to kind of put us, give us a lead. Oh, mm. man, it was exciting after that. <laughs> Well, within that game and leading up to your, of course, iconic hit in the seventh inning, Cecil, I want to go back. So it was, you fell behind early. You mentioned that. Ben Ogilvie hits a home run that brings you within three to two. So you've got a one-run deficit, but there was a really big defensive play. What do you remember about Charlie Moore throwing out Reggie Jackson to keep it a one-run game? Well, there's another guy. There's another name right there. I mean, someone who didn't particularly uh, uh, show up a lot during the season with big hits, but there's a guy who could play all over the field, and he played right field and made an outstanding throw across the diamond. He had a great throwing arm of being a catcher, and all of a sudden he's in the outfield, and he has a great throwing arm, and he throws across the diamond, cuts down Reggie Jackson. That's one of the biggest plays. Uh, people don't talk about it, but one mm -hmm. of the biggest plays, I thought, uh, in the ball game and in that series. And uh, Charlie contributed, you know, in so many ways throughout the season. And I, I give him a little credit for being one of the guys who kept our attitude good because between Charlie and Gorman and uh, Jimmy Gantner, they kind of kept us loose and uh, kept us mm -hmm. excited, uh, not only in that series, but throughout the, the season as well. And I, I think that's one of the keys that propelled us was just our attitude and the way we went about things. Well, that big defensive play by Charlie Moore kept that game within reach for you, a one-run deficit that, of course, sets up all the drama in the seventh <laughs> inning. The bases are loaded for you thanks to two singles and a walk. Two outs. You're facing Luis Sanchez. Cecil, do you remember pitch by pitch that at bat? Uh, I think so for the most part. Uh, but let me just back up a second. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the last time at plate appearance, I had a chance to – to, to, to get a base hit, I believe to either pull us even or just pull us ahead or something like that. And, and I, I, I think I uh, fly it out to left field or something like that. It didn't come through, in other words. And then I had another opportunity here in the seventh. And uh, the bases are loaded. I believe Robin works a walk uh, right before me. And so now the bases are loaded. And uh, I, I, I was looking out in the bullpen because I actually thought that uh, they would bring in a reliever, left-handed reliever, to, to face me. And uh, Gene Mock decided not to do that and uh, mm -hmm. became advantage Cecil. And uh, the very first pitch, I think, was a fastball uh, on the outer part of the plate that I fouled off. And I go to 0-1. And, and then I believe I fouled off another fastball and then 9 0 2 And then he throws a ball. And then I think I foul off a pitch to go to 1-2. and two, And then he throws me another fastball. I mean, you don't show good hitters too many pitches in the same general area. And he did it for like the third or fourth time. And by that time, you know, I'm kind of got him zeroed in a little bit. And I was able to put a pretty good swing on the ball and hit a line drive to left field. And all I can remember is uh, <laughs> using my arms to say, get down, get down. Uh, we need a base hit. We need the score, you know, to go ahead. And we were fortunate enough to do that. And I kind of looked back and I saw, uh, I think it was Charlie was the last run and he was sliding in. And <laughs> that's the only thing I can remember. It was just an <laughs> outstanding moment. And uh, one of the happiest times of my career, without, without a doubt. And I know the city and the, and the state of Wisconsin just went crazy. Cecil, that's one of the iconic images, right? Is you, your swing, your run into first, and your arms just pleading that ball to get down. Was that just reaction in the moment of, you know, just the desperation of wanting to come through in that moment? That's all it was, just to, hey, the ball has to get down. Sometimes when you hit a ball that way, especially from a left-hand hitter, a lot of times the ball will hang up in the air. And all I could think about was uh, back in 19, I believe it was 75, I was in their World Series with the Red Sox and Carlton Fisk hit a home run to left field. And he was waving his arm to make sure that the ball stayed fair. And all, that's the only thing that came to my mind was make sure it gets down, get down. So I started pumping my arm for it to get down. And, and boy, I tell you, one of the greatest moments ever for me. <laughs> the ball got down, hit the grass. <laughs> yes. Can you can you describe the reaction from the fans at County Stadium and maybe what you saw from your teammates in the dugout? Of course, that great image of Charlie Moore. I, I'm not even sure Jim Gantner, he touched home, but I think Charlie Moore ripped him right up. He was so excited <laughs> as well. Um, yeah. What do you remember about the reaction, the energy in County Stadium in that moment? 
Well, you know, I kind of took a peek over there towards the dugout in the stands, and people were just going crazy. I mean, just it reminded me of kind of like uh, – I don't like, you know, like you're winning a World Series or something. People just went crazy. Everybody was jumping and yelling and waving their arms and clapping. I mean, just an outstanding moment, uh, without a doubt. The greatest moment, uh, not only for me, but, you know, for our franchise uh, at that, up to that mo at the moment. Well, you have the lead, 4-3. to three. Pete Ladd comes in for the save, and he had been tremendous filling in for Raleigh Fingers. And... I've spoken to Robin Yount about this, but that final out, Cecil, he said that when he picked up that ball and threw it to you at first base, he thought that the ball would never get to your glove. <laughs> to, be on the to be on the receiving end of that throw from Robin Yount for the final out to win the American League pennant, um, can you describe that play, that moment, and the celebration that followed? Well, you know, I, I kept uh, reminding myself, stay on the back. Don't come off too soon. Don't come off too soon. You know, and then I was kind of a little worried, too, because this is the, one of the best hitters in the American League is hitting, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, for Pete to come through, get him with a ground ball to short, because this guy could place the ball wherever he wanted to. And he hit it right at Robin, and Robin made the play. And I could just remember that ball coming across at a flight, and I could just remember telling myself, make sure you stay on the base, stay on the base, stay on the base. And I was able to stay on, and then I just – kind of jumped in throwing both my hands in the air. So just a, a, almost like the ball was in kind of a suspended in animation or something. It's really kind of a slow motion coming across, but I was able to get it. And uh, Robin threw it right on target and everything. And uh, just an outstanding play. And we'll probably never see this scene ever again, but the fans, <laughs> you know, this, the crush of fans coming to yeah. celebrate on the field with you as a team what do you remember about that post-game celebration as all of County Stadium and fans across Milwaukee and Wisconsin are going nuts to see this team, this 1982 team, win the American League pennant and be headed to the World Series? Well, you know, just uh, the fans just flooded the field. I remember after we kind of did our celebration, I, I tried to make my way to the dugout and into the clubhouse, and it was like running through just a madhouse of people. You know, I was pushing people away and swinging. I still don't remember if I had my hat. I think I lost my hat. <laughs> I'm not sure where the ball went because it just was a madhouse. People were all over the place. And just an incredible moment and uh, something that will live on for me for forever, for just an outstanding time, uh, you know, for the city and for the organization and for the team and just, just an incredible moment. And just the excitement of it all. What a wonderful celebration. Well, that's a good question. Who, who has that ball from the final out? Do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. The only thing I do remember that, I mean, I do have is my glove from that, that particular okay. year and that year at the time. Yeah, I have my glove. But the ball, my hat, I don't know what happened to it. I'll, I'll someone someone in Milwaukee has it, right? Oh, I'm pretty sure of that. Yes, for sure. But all I remember is just trying to fight my way through the crowd and make it into the dugout and make it into the clubhouse. And fortunately, I was able to do it. But, man, it was crazy. I mean, they just spilled all over the field. They were everywhere. It was just incredible. And I remember our little celebration on the field, guys jumping on top of each other. And if I'm not mistaken, I think somebody jumped on my back a little bit, you know, and then I jumped <laughs> on someone. So just an incredible time. And, and uh, almost as, as, as good as uh, – Winning the pennant over there in, uh, in Baltimore. Yeah, well, it's a miracle that none of you got hurt within that really, celebration. Really. So many people on the field. I mean, truly a miracle, thank God. But um, so that sets you up. You go to the World Series, of course, and we know how that ends. But, but Cecil, to have that opportunity to play in a World Series, that is the goal of every major league player for you what meant what meant the most to you to have that opportunity to represent the brewers in the world series well you know it's a special moment you know for my career uh, from the brewers uh having spent 11 years there and i really uh i could kind of see it coming because we started out my very first year there which was 1977 uh, uh sal bando came over and then we had we added uh, larry heisel you know and we had uh, robin young jimmy gander charlie moore uh, Paul Mahler, those guys were kind of, and Gorman Thomas, they were kind of already there. So we kind of mm -hmm. added some guys to that. And you could see the team starting to build. In 81, we were able to go to that mini World Series, I mean, mini playoff with the Yankees. So you, you could see the team building. And to that moment, to get to that point, that's the greatest feeling in the world. And I mean, that's every player's dream to, 
to, to get to a World Series. And I was fortunate to do it as a young player in, in 1975 with the Red Sox, but to do it as a brewer and to know that I was an integral part of that, that's mm -hmm. one of the greatest feeling anyone could have. Such great stories, great memories. Thank you so much for the time, Cecil. We do really appreciate it and uh, hope you're staying well and staying healthy. Yes, we we're staying safe. We we're staying indoors and staying quarantined kind of and uh, just tell everybody there in Wisconsin to do the same and uh, let, let's try to get through all this. I know we will. All right. Well, we look forward to having Brewers baseball back hopefully soon, but uh, until then, thanks for joining us and reliving some of these great Brewers classics and the 1982 ALCS. All right, thank you.